Hey, up, good day, everybody. This is Sportsline News. I'm Joe Bork, and this is going to be the latest edition of the grittiest take as we check in. Even after a tough loss to Wilkesbury, our Phantoms have looked sharper, winning three out of their last four, Reddit, or heading into, I should say, the home stretch of the season. The problem is, will the telltale end of this season be it's a little bit too late, or will they be able to kind of pull one of those big recovery acts at the end of the season like we see many teams do in the past history of the AHL, NHL, and other leagues? So, it's it's a storybook that they're trying to write here up until April 30th. So it's going to be interesting <clears throat> to see what the Phantoms can do now playing better hockey, where on Friday, the game that I was at with Sam Wismer, they played very good hockey. Ryan McKinnon has played great as a forward when he's really a defenseman, and he's been able to move to that position, play well. Lazinski had a Mike Richards-esque steal, stealing it at center ice and going in and scoring on the breakaway. I remember when Richie used to do that. And then against Utica, I'm not reviewing all the goals, by the way, because you guys know what happened in those games. We're just reviewing some things. Garrett Wilson, Tanner Lizinski, and Zamula teamed up. The big one is part of one of the big threes. Obviously, three of the big players all for the Phantoms teamed up. Zamula, kind of surprising he's not with the Flyers, but good that he's helping the Phantoms still. McKinnon again scores. So Ryan McKinnon, who's not even a scorer, scores in back-to-back -back games. So they're getting different guys to step up in this good stretch of hockey that they're playing at the right time, obviously. It's just we'll get to where they are with points and everything. Is it going to be a little bit too late? We'll get to that in a minute. And then against Bridgeport, they even found a way to win a tough game um, that took until the final, or to overtime, to be able to get a victory, which uh, had Adam Johnson, who I'm very happy to be able to eat crow on that, because I thought Johnson was a solid pickup, but a veteran pickup that's more of an a AHL third liner, that's just an average player that brings speed to the lineup, but he's actually been much more than that. So when I'm wrong, and it's very beneficial to the team, I love that. So that's great to see, and hopefully he continues to be a great mm -hmm. veteran presence and continue to play kind of the best hockey of his AHL career, honestly, lately, where he never really had as much of a mm -hmm. scoring touch with the um, Wilkes-Barre, Scranton, Penguins, because if you look at his uh, stats and also just by how he played, we've seen him play a good bit because we obviously play Wilkes-Barre a good bit. He, he just didn't look as sharp as he does now. Seems like he's playing his best hockey here, so that's very good to see. Logan Day also had a blast in that game, one of the better uh, defensemen on the team in terms of just being nice and structured, doesn't try to overcomplicate things, has a good shot, a pretty accurate shot, not the hardest shot. Manel probably now, honestly, has the hardest shot on the team, and uh, we saw that with the deflection goal as well. So I think <clears throat> everybody that came in, including Manel, he's playing really well, other than 17 penalty minutes, you might want to look at those but he did after his first game so he's playing really well adding a good physical front a blocking front Brennan Manel is plus also being good in the offensive end Ratcliffe's been playing great lately O'Reilly's been fantastic all year when Denning hit a milestone so congratulations to him and then also continuing throughout um, obviously, Garrett Wilson's been great as well, and then Zamula's been great as well, and then Wyatt Wiley also has been very good. So as long as this team can continue, they did lose 3-1 to one to Wilkes-Barre, but uh, that was a game that they didn't defend as well. Hodgson also had a bad play on the one goal they allowed, but then he answered back, and he was the only guy with a goal in that game. The Phantoms' offense wasn't the best. They left their goaltender out to dry a couple times in that game, which was Felix Sandstrom. So uh, if, as long as they can this weekend, uh, starting tonight, play against Hershey much better, just like they did against Bridgeport or against Utica, and play tighter and play more physical and also get in the way of more shots compared to what they did against Wilkes-Barre, and be able to push the ante, not overcomplicate things on offense more like they did in that Wednesday game against Wilkes-Barre. They went back to overcomplicating things. They should be fine against Hershey, because Hershey's 31-26-5-4 with 25-27-4, but the Phantoms have been inconsistent at times against the Bears, but obviously they've also played some good hockey against the Bears this year, so hopefully we get that. And then Bridgeport, well, we're playing them back-to-back -back Sundays, Hopefully it can be the same um, score, 4-3, to three, and get a win there. And then the next game would be against the Providence Bruins, who are 31-19-4-6. That's going to be a really tough game. So the Phantoms got a really tough game. So if they can continue to find ways to win and play uh, better hockey, looking sharper heading into the home stretch, then there is a chance for the Lehigh Valley Phantoms. The problem is <clears throat> they kind of dug themselves into a fairly deep hole by how soft of a 
start, I would say, they got off to it. And, yeah, injuries played into that and everything. So we have to factor all of that in. But also, Ian LaPierre is his first-year coach, and you have to factor in adjusting to a coaching role compared to being an assistant. That's a huge adjustment. But they're at 61 points to Hartford, 66. The win percentage, which is uh, what matters this year, is .477 to .516. So they do have to go up. A decent bit where Harford, of course, is a team that was fantastic to start up the year and then they've uh, fallen off. They were much higher to uh, start up the season. Now they're all the way down to six. But uh, that's also has in part to do with guys the Rangers caught up that are no longer on Harford's roster. But with Lehigh Valley, it's about being able to recover up to Harford. Harford, if they can keep mm-hmm. struggling, they do have a chance. Bridgeport, that's a pivotal game to win on Sunday, especially after losing that game to Wilkesbury on Wednesday. Beating Bridgeport and beating Hershey this evening are very pivotal for the Phantoms. And then if they lose to Providence, that's not the biggest surprise because you just got two massive wins in a row coming into a third massive game. Obviously, that's the game they lost in the Wilkesbury game. They had two big wins in a row and then... <clears throat> came into the third game, and were not able to get the victory. But this has been the latest edition of the Ghostly Take. The Phantoms are looking sharper heading into the home stretch, but will they be able to be continuously very sharp to round out the season up to April 30th? Because that's what they're going to need in order to make the postseason. Or is this going to be just something that's great, round out the season, and good progress for next season as Lappy enters his second season as head coach? And kind of a telltale story of, being too little too late because of the soft start at the beginning of the season. Everybody have a great, safe, pleasant day. Please continue to subscribe down below to help us grow to 2.30 or more by the end of April. We appreciate you guys' love and support this far or up above on that easy-to-use widget. Peace out, everybody, and stay safe.